anti-loitering laws and the right to movement in the U.S. are two important aspects aimed at maintaining public order and protecting individual freedoms. Balancing them is a complex issue that requires careful consideration. Today, let's explore a specific case to better understand how these laws are applied. Travis Hines, a YouTuber and urban explorer, was resting in his car in the Turtle Lake Village parking lot, Wisconsin. At this time, police chief Al Gabe arrived to check on him and ask for some information. Travis quickly took out his phone, recorded the entire process, and uploaded it to his personal channel. Um, this is uh, not for people just to be just hanging out here sleeping in their vehicles. Just rest. You yeah, got some ID? It's, it's uncomfortable sitting like this, so... Well, you're in here sleeping like that. Laying down. No, okay, is that what ordinance you, the, uh, mark there? Police Chief Al Gabe asked why he had been there all day and requested his identification. He also told Hines that he was violating Turtle Lake's anti-loitering regulations. According to Section 1124 of the Turtle Lake Village Code, loitering is defined as an individual being in a place without a lawful purpose. However, this regulation only applies after an individual has been asked to leave by law enforcement. This means that Mr. Hines parking in a public parking lot does not violate the above regulation as there was no prior intervention by authorities. Anti-loitering laws are often controversial regarding their constitutionality due to their ambiguity, lack of specific information on prohibited behavior, and potential for arbitrary enforcement and discrimination. Oh yeah, and were you, were you called or... No? Or you just come up on your own to... It doesn't... Okay. Don't turn my words around. Well, we're not we, going to play that We've all been here, I mean, for a right while. Now, this is, uh, we're asking you to leave our a... town completely. At this point, Travis asked the police chief whether he came by himself or if someone had reported him. U.S. police have the right to investigate and request information from a person if there is reasonable suspicion that the individual is involved in criminal activity, as per the Terry Ohio ruling. However, this right is limited by the Constitution, particularly the Fourth Amendment, which protects citizens from unreasonable searches and seizures. This requires police to follow specific legal regulations and prevents them from abusing their authority. We're not going to debate this, That'd okay? You guys are really crazy. No, we're not. You don't want to ID yourself, so let's get back in your car and take your stuff I'm and head out of here. Police Chief Al Gabe then said that if Hines did not want to provide information, he would have to leave and asserted that this was an official order. If you find yourself in a similar situation where you have doubts about an official order from the police, you need to remain calm and cooperate with the officers. Ask if there is an official order or legal basis for their request. If the police cannot present a valid warrant, you have the right to refuse their request. Politely explain your reason for refusal and ask for the incident to be documented. Additionally, you can request a lawyer, record the events, or seek legal assistance if the situation escalates. If you want to exchange information, I mean, I could do that with you. So, what do, you, what do we got here? Uh, you only have a name tag, huh? Like, take your stuff and get your car and let's go. <laughs> go where? I, out of town. I haven't even I haven't even marked a place to go. I was, was going to be. Well, you need to just leave town then. When Travis expressed a willingness to exchange information, the officer still refused and said that he had stayed too long in Turtle Lake. Therefore, he needed to leave immediately. Over and you're calling this an ordinance? I'm, I'm getting you're loitering in our town. Well, let's let's, uh, let's look it up. We got the internet here. Let's go. Let's, yep. let's get your car. Let's go. We're not going to play your game. Let's go. Yeah, we're done. You need to leave. You know, I That's think an order from us. I, you don't have follow our order. We can... The conversation became increasingly tense, and Officer Gabe stated that they had the authority to take Travis to jail if he did not comply. It should be noted that the right to movement is a constitutional right protected by the U.S. Constitution. Recognizing the right to movement and residency as fundamental in a democratic country. However, 
This right is not absolute and can be restricted in certain circumstances. This right also does not mean individuals can move anywhere at any time. Authorities have the power to require individuals to leave specific areas if they violate the law or pose a danger to public order. In Mr. Travis's case, a court might find that Chief Gabe's order for him to leave the parking lot was reasonable. However, some argue that this action could be unconstitutional, especially if the village council had permitted Mr. Travis to park there. A lawful order to leave. Yes. And, and, and what's, what's the limit for parking? You said, not a place to camp out. He's not camping. It's only you're here sleeping. You told me you're here sleeping. So what? Yeah, it's getting a little rainy, huh? Yeah. So let's go head out of town and find somewhere else to rest. I think things are going to I don't want to stand out here. In the end, Travis decided to comply with Chief Gabe's order and left the village. Travis's decision to leave the village might be a wise choice in this situation to avoid further conflict and ensure personal safety. Travis remained calm and respectful, recorded the conversation, and used his YouTube channel to share the incident and advocate for change. After the video was posted and received numerous negative reactions from the public, the Turtle Lake Village Council officially suspended the wandering ban regulation following a wave of public outcry. Additionally, the council is reviewing and amending other regulations to ensure constitutional compliance and has hired an independent agency to investigate Chief Gabe's actions. Police Chief Gabe retired in January 2023 for unrelated reasons, stating that his retirement was not due to this incident. He mentioned that his decision to retire had been planned beforehand. In my opinion, this behavior not only demonstrates Chief Gabe's disregard for the Constitution, but also reveals an excessive view of his own authority as a police chief. His actions may violate in USC S.S. 242, which prescribes penalties of up to one year in prison or a corresponding fine for violators. Moreover, this encounter highlights the importance of officers understanding and respecting citizens' rights and the limits of their authority. Thank you for watching today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. See you in the next video. Using racial slurs is a condemnable act that sows seeds of hatred and division within society. These words not only cause emotional harm to the victims, but also perpetuate outdated social prejudices and hinder the overall development of the community. This is Jim, the suspect accused of using racial slurs. January the 21st, 2023, at approximately 10.44 p.m., on a call about a man standing in the hallway yelling racial slurs, officers with the Columbus Division of Police were dispatched to an apartment building and threatening to kill people. Days in January 21, 2023, at around 10 or 44 p.m., officers from the Columbus Police Department were called to an apartment complex after receiving a report about a man standing in the hallway shouting racial slurs and making threats against others. When my roommate, Mr. Troy Johnson, who is now in apartment 22, okay. did not like my use of the M, that kind of gives me the right to use it, in my opinion. Okay. If, no, it doesn't, that's ignorant, it's ignorant. What was ignorant is the fact that you still call me friend. Okay. You know, called me, you know, racially derogatory terms, but if I dropped the N word one time, mm -hmm. then suddenly it's racist. I just... According to the suspect, the conflict started between him and his roommate, Mr. Troy Johnson, in apartment 22. Jim claimed that Mr. Johnson did not like his use of racial slurs, but Jim insisted he had the right due to unpleasant past experiences. However, in America, no one has the right to insult the dignity and honor of others, regardless of the reason. You know, so it's been kind of like racially... Uh, what, what's been ignorant is the fact that you guys don't think it's okay to... Because of that? Yeah. Okay. How many people? Uh, five, all in 22. Okay. And all fucking trying to clamber up and say they didn't do it. 
Right? I'm just in my, you know, How I step out in my hallway. Do you know specifically who they were? The Troy Vaughn, Kyra, uh, Troy, and whoever else was in the apartment. 42 S Code. This is 1981. Equal rights under the law. This law states that all individuals within the United States are entitled to the same rights in the performance and protection of rights and duties, as well as protection by the law, regardless of race. Therefore, insulting someone's dignity and honor based on race can be considered a violation of civil rights under this law. And I said, dude, I've earned every right in the world. Just don't uh, I'm trying not to. How many? Five, all in 22, and all fucking trying to climb her up and say they didn't do it. When asked, he also mentioned that a group of people from apartment 22 had attacked him after he used this word. If attacked, quickly find a safe place. Call 911 immediately to report the incident and request police assistance. If you cannot escape, use self-defense skills or nearby objects to protect yourself. Stay calm and carefully observe the attacker to provide information to the police later. Please, once safe, report the details to the police and seek psychological support if needed. If necessary, find a lawyer and request a protection order to ensure your safety. Where, what were you doing upstairs with the machete? Where's your apartment at, first off? 18. 18, which is just over on the right other there. side. Right? Right. That sounds like you were coming in the hallway because you want to retaliate because you got to buy it. It's not retaliation, it's okay. protection. Okay. When asked about the weapon in his hand, the man explained that he carried it only for self-defense in case of an attack. However, this reason did not seem to convince the police. They believed that carrying a machete in a common hallway was not a reasonable act of self-defense, but rather posed a risk to others and could stem from an intent to retaliate. According to Columbus City Law, carrying dangerous weapons like this in public can violate weapon and public safety regulations. Ohio Revised Code 2923.12, Carrying Concealed Weapons. Section 2923.12 of the Ohio Code states that carrying concealed weapons or potentially lethal weapons without a valid permit is illegal and subject to criminal prosecution. Carrying weapons not only increases the risk of violence, but also causes public concern, thus giving the police grounds to detain and further investigate the man's true intentions I had to break so. myself into my own apartment. Why is that? And I had to break, break into my apartment to get into, to get my, to my machete and protect myself. When the police inquired further about the incident, Jim stated that he was attacked in his apartment and then had to go out into the hallway to defend himself. He couldn't re-enter the apartment because he lost his key and had to break the door to get in. Jim asserted that he did not attack anyone first, but only defended himself when he was attacked. You also were in the hallway with a machete, not defending yourself that was necessarily, myself before you but showed trying up. to start a fight. So to make, no, there wasn't a, that was to defend myself before you guys got here because I had already called you. Why didn't you defend yourself then, in your apartment? They were in my apartment. When the police gathered more information, the suspect responded that he could not stay in the apartment because he was attacked and needed to go into the hallway to protect himself before the police arrived. Police emphasized that he should have stayed in the apartment and waited for their assistance. So then why did you go back out into the hallway? To wait for you guys. Because you were my next best protection. That's okay. it. Why couldn't you barricade yourself or put yourself in the apartment? At this point, things began to clear up. It seems that Jim had started using racial slurs. His roommate confronted him about it, and the suspect attempted to assault him. The suspect then ran into his apartment, grabbed a machete, and began threatening to harm everyone with it. In Ohio, 
using racial slurs against others can be considered a legal violation, especially when such words cause threats or harm to others. Section 2927.12, Ethnic Intimidation. Ohio Revised Code, this law states that if acts such as threats, property damage, or telephone harassment are committed due to someone's race, color, religion, or national origin, the act will be elevated to a higher offense. Please. Okay. I wondered if y'all was concerned about my welfare. I was. Hell, what's happening, Captain? Not much hurry. It wasn't me this afternoon. What? Did you see what happened? An example of this is the case of Sean Fabich, who was convicted of using racial slurs against his neighbor. The Ohio court upheld the conviction for ethnic intimidation and disorderly conduct, stating that the use of racial slurs in that context was fighting not protected by the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. So he jumps out of his apartment and put him up in the white neighbor's way because he's just starting the shit. Yeah. Got to fight him. The police then approached several other witnesses to verify the information. One of the witnesses stated that the suspect used racial slurs and brandished a machete to threaten everyone. This witness also mentioned a similar incident a few months prior. What, uh, what happened with Jim? Uh, Jim wanted to beat my ass. Okay. And then I had to fight him. Okay. Are you hurt at all? Yeah. Other witnesses also reported being harassed by Jim. One man said that Jim had assaulted him. Another man stated that Jim threatened to kill black people and called them extremely offensive including the racial slur. The police may request and record witness statements as part of the investigation process. These statements are often documented in initial incident reports and additional written statements. Moreover, Police must adhere to regulations prohibiting the fabrication or coercion of witness statements. Or if witnesses feel threatened or coerced when providing their statements, they have the right to report and may seek legal assistance. Hey, get a witness statement. You good? I'm going to jail. Ah! We're out of medicine. I've had enough. Yep. You tell people you're going to chop their head. If you don't loosen up, I'm going to throw you on the ground. I'm loosen up. I'm loosen up. After gathering sufficient witness statements, the police decided to arrest Jim for disorderly conduct and using racial slurs. However, he did not cooperate and yelled at the police. The police then had to use force to handcuff him. With Jim's use of a machete to threaten others, he could face several charges. Ohio Revised Code 2903.11 for causing serious injury to another person with a deadly weapon. Ohio Revised Code 2903.21 for threatening serious injury, which can be charged as a first-degree felony. Ohio Revised Code 2923.12 for carrying a concealed weapon without a valid permit. Ohio Revised Code 2917.11 for causing disorder and public disturbance, which can be charged as a misdemeanor. These actions not only endanger individuals, but also threaten community security, leading to severe penalties under Ohio law. Violator of these actions can face at least 30 days in jail for disorderly conduct and up to eight years in prison for assault with a deadly weapon with specific penalties determined by the court's judgment. Although it is unknown what charges he will face, it is hoped that he will receive a just consequence for his actions. Hopefully, the law will be enforced strictly to protect the safety and justice for everyone. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Share your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.